Hey guys, Micah here with Tactic California. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today we are discussing the Sightmark Wolverine and Magnifier combo. Let's go ahead and dive right into the specs. This is a two MOA red dot. It's a little big for what it is. Um, it is made in China. Uh, they can be had for about 150 bucks. The Sightmark Wolverine looks different. I'm not gonna say I don't like it or that I like it, but when I look at it, I, I immediately go, what is that? And that might be marketing and that actually might be them just coming up with a unique design. I'm not really sure, but I like the fact that it looks different. I don't know that I necessarily like the way it looks personally. I mean, everyone, you know, to each his own, but I do like that it looks different. It's something new, something that doesn't look like another micro dot or another comp M4. It's kind of nice to see something that doesn't look like, like an aim point. Uh, just let it be its own thing. A couple features I do like about the Wolverine red dot. Uh, the two MOA dot seems to be small enough for precise shooting. However, under magnification, it really smears. Um, I do like the uh, fact that it comes with a quick detach mount. I think that was really clever on their part. I'm really stoked to see red dots coming with quick detach. I think that's just the future, that's the way it should be. Uh, people have been doing it on high quality optics such as the EOTech EXPS series or the A.T1 or T2 series, you can get them in quick detach mounts. Uh, I think quick detach is what everyone wants, it's kind of a standard. It's nice to see, especially on such an inexpensive red dot, that it came with the quick detach mount. Now, Sightmark says this is made out of aircraft-grade aluminum. They do not specify what kind of aluminum that is. I don't know exactly why they don't specify it, because we all kind of have assumptions about what aircraft-grade aluminum is, 6061, 7075, uh, and the like. But um, nonetheless, they don't really say. So it's kind of interesting that they don't say what aluminum it's made out of. Uh, but it, for all intents and purposes, I think it's gonna be fine. Especially with the, uh, they call it a rubber coating. I actually think it's like a rubber sleeve. I can move it around. I don't know if, if you guys can see this, but I can wiggle the rubber around on top of the optic. So, uh, if it's a coating, it's coming off. If it's a sleeve, then it's fine. So I think it's a sleeve. I do like that the turrets are capped and that the caps are captured by these little tethers to the body of the optic. That way you're not gonna lose your caps. Really smart idea, it's not anything new, but it, again, really nice to see on such an inexpensive red dot. It's a really kind of high, more high quality of a feature. I also really like that the turrets are protected somewhat by this rubber housing. Uh, we've got shielding on the sides here for both the windage and the elevation. And we have this nice ramp leading up to the elevation turret to allow things to, if they bump in or the gun runs into something, to just slip right over the turret, not take that impact to the turret. That's really nice. Again, a great feature for something so inexpensive. Now this optic does run on a single AA battery. Easy enough to change without a tool should you need to, but of course there's a flathead there if you wanna wrench down a little bit more on it. I like the fact that it runs on a AA. I think uh, as technology progresses, especially LED technology, there's no reason why we can't use common household batteries to power these things. Now they claim up to 1 million hours of battery life. I think that's a little absurd. I think they're getting ahead of themselves. I think it was a marketing ploy. It's probably on their lowest possible setting with the auto off feature and in the right weather. I, I, I just don't understand how you can quantify, how you can tangibly come up with that integer that you can say, yes, 1 million hours of runtime. You have not run this optic 1 million hours. You just haven't. It's a Chinese made $150 red dot. You can't say it actually can run 1 million hours. It's math, but it's not science. You guys, I don't really don't think you should be saying it's a million hour runtime. The adjustments are nice. They're very tactile buttons, simple up or down. And it does have an auto off feature. After a set amount of hours, the optic will go ahead and shut down and you'll need to manually push a button to turn it back on. Now the weight and size of the optic are less than desirable, especially if someone who's used to running micro dots. Uh, but I do run a lot of EOTEX. I'm, I'm running a lot of EOTEX. And even for me, the size of this is a little ludicrous. Um, it's really big, which isn't a big deal if my field of view is big. However, when looking down the, the optic, the tube feels like a 30 millimeter tube. It feels like a aim point T1 or T2. So I've got this very small tube I'm looking through with all this extra housing around it that I can't see around. So this isn't ideal if you want large field of view or if you just wanna see peripheral past that initial field of view through the tube. So uh, 
you know, again, it's an inexpensive red dot. It's not meant to be the the best. It's meant to be affordable. And uh, so I don't really fault them for it, but I think that they could have designed better. Uh, the housing could be smaller or the tube could be a little bigger. And I think it would uh, definitely help out in me liking this red dot more. The magnifier is a 3X magnifier. It's a simple push and clicks into place via detent. Uh, and it uses a tube mount, which is kind of nice. I'm not saying for sure that you could use someone else's mount, but I I'm pretty sure you could, like Vortex's mount or something like that, because it's just a clamp, as long as the tube diameter is the same, which I have not checked. But I do like that they use the clamp style so you can change out the mount. And let's talk about the mount. Uh, the Sightmark mount, again, comes with quick detach, but it's a different QD latch than that of the Red Dot. Um, so I thought that was really bizarre that I'm using two different QDs for a combo that comes from the same company. And it's just not very intuitive to have to have two different unlocking methods to unlock these optics should I need to take them off the rifle. The mounting of the magnifier is the worst feature I have ever seen on something that has been sent to me. Once it's mounted, it's fine. Once it's on the gun, it's fine. Good luck getting it off. And good luck getting it on. It is a challenge. I don't know if there's springs missing from this testing unit or what is going on, but it is a, a true challenge to get this thing on the gun uh, without getting things backwards or, or mount pieces flipping or catching on itself to where it doesn't want to tighten down. One, again, once it's on, fine, no big deal. But I wouldn't call this quick detach because there's an inner piece that tracks inside that when, this, when the lever throws, it inserts itself up against the receiver and holds everything down. Now that piece that tracks, again, maybe there's missing springs, I don't know, but when you take the lever off, it just sits in place. It needs some sort of assistance to move back out of the way to get the mount off the receiver. In other words, it's not easy to take this off the rifle. You gotta kind of smack it and, and wiggle it and, and play with it and loosen this and, and push the rod through and through until something happens where you can finally get it off the rifle. I think that's completely unacceptable. If you, especially if you're gonna throw a quick detach mount on something, it better be quick detach. This is worse than just a thumb screw in my opinion. And I definitely wouldn't recommend the magnifier with this mount. If you were looking at this magnifier red dot combo, you told yourself, I absolutely want this. This is for me, it's in my price range. Great, uh, look into replacing the mount for the magnifier. That's all I have to say and uh, you'll, you'll be much happier. We do have an adjustable diopter, which is great. So we can get that little bit of focus that we need for our eye. And we, I love this, it's just like the EOTech. We can move where that reticle sits inside of the magnifier as far as our field of view. We can center that reticle all with our thumbs. We don't need any tools. That's great because you might be throwing this magnifier behind one red dot and you, then you go, hey, you know what? I wanna zero this other optic on this other rifle. Go ahead and throw the magnifier behind it because you're gonna see down range better. And uh, you, you gotta center that one now too. So it's just nice. Thumbs all the way, no tool needed whatsoever to adjust where that reticle sits inside of that tube. A uh, big thumbs up there, that's a great feature. The eye relief on their magnifier is a little bit less than an EOTech. I don't know what they claim on specs, but I have been using two different EOTech magnifier combos for the better part of six months now. And I gotta be completely honest, the eye relief on this thing, I noticed immediately when I go to shoulder it, I really, even though I put my stock in the same position, put the magnifier in the same position as I had my EOTechs, I either needed to bring my stock in or bring my head forward enough like a freaking turtle to really get down the sight and uh, get perfect eye relief so that I didn't have any uh, shadow around uh, the field of view. Also the QD arm on the magnifier is a little long. And if you're not running a rear sight and you wanna give yourself better eye relief, you're gonna move this magnifier all the way rearward. The problem with that is that the lever in the most rearward position of the receiver will actually run into your charging handle. It will physically engage the latch slightly and the charging handle will not be sitting in its closed frontward position. Uh, pretty big issue there. I definitely would have shaved down the lever just another quarter of an inch, half of an inch, whatever you needed to do to make sure that that doesn't happen. So uh, Sightmark, if you guys are listening, uh, go ahead. If you fix those features, if you made 
the uh, magnifier mount better if you made the dot a little crisper. I think you'd have a real winner on your hands. And I think, again, for the price point of around 300 to 400 bucks, depending on where you look, including Optics Planet, uh, you would have a great combo for a very in inexpensive price. If you like this video, please click like down below and subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews, training, and gun news. Check us out on Facebook at Tech to California, Instagram at Tech to California underscore, and Patreon at patreon.com slash Tech to California. Also, we are a brand ambassador with Optics Planet, so use the code TCA5 for 5% off your entire order site-wide, no matter what you're buying. It's a great deal. It's gonna help you guys save money. And last but not least, LAX sent you guys a discount code, LAXAMO.com. They have great reloads. They have even better factory ammo. They got 9 mil, 223. They got it all. And I would definitely use the discount code to save 5% plus free shipping. That discount code is T-A-C-T-I, capital C-A, 17, L-A-X. So that's Tacti C-A, 17, L-A-X. I'm Michael with Tacti California. Thanks for watching.